Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for tonight's uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Maggie Chen Breckenridge. Uh, we're very happy to have my students' panels here. And then um, the assistant provost, uh, Dr. Craig Strihorn, uh, join us and to welcome everybody. Uh, good evening from Amherst, Massachusetts. Uh, my name is Dr. Craig Strihorn. As Maggie said, I'm the assistant provost for enrollment management. Uh, which means that I have um, the absolute pleasure to help oversee our undergraduate international admissions. Um, I first and foremost want to congratulate you. Um, this year was by far uh, the most applications that we've ever received as a university. Uh, we had over 7,000 international applications, which means that uh, your admission letter, your, your ticket, to, uh, to come to UMass Amherst is very rare and very valuable. And we hope that you take advantage of it. To that end, tonight we're here and we're joined by several of our current students uh, to answer questions and to highlight some key steps moving forward. So um, please let us know how we can help you in making this difficult decision. And we're so glad that you're here tonight. So um, I'm gonna hand it back over to Maggie. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. And congratulations and welcome. Uh, I am so excited. I'm so glad that I have a student here. Uh, they are our current students, international students uh, on the panel, and they are going to be um, answering most of your questions. And, you know, you don't want to hear from me or from, from Craig because I don't, I'm not a student here. And therefore, listening to uh, have our students to share their experience with you is really valuable. And I hope you will be um, asking a lot of questions. And there's a function, it's a chat. Uh, you're more than welcome to type your question in the chat. And then uh, our students will uh, answer questions that you answer your questions. All right, so before we begin, I would like to have um, our students to introduce themselves. And then um, Yukika and Rashi, that you're going to tell your name. I already told them your name. <laughs> and then the country you're from, and then uh, the year and the major. So Yukika and Rashi, go ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Yukika. I'm originally from Japan, and I'm a junior marketing and informatics major. Nice to meet you all. Rashi and JJ. Hi everyone, I'm Rashi and I'm a junior in psychology and congratulations for all of you for being admitted to UMass. Rashi, where are you from? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm from India. Okay, Okay, JJ and Zinap. Hi, I'm JJ. I'm originally from South Korea. I major in physics and applied math, double majoring. Um, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice. And Zainab and OQ. Hi, everyone. My name is Zainab. I am from Istanbul, Turkey, and I'm a sophomore animal science major. Hi, everyone. I'm OQ. I'm originally from Turkey. Uh, I am a freshman this year, and I'm majoring in biochemistry and molecular biology. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, today's agenda that we're going to uh, present, uh, let you to get to know more about UMass, and we will open uh, a lot of, uh, more time for you to uh, uh, answer, uh, qu ask questions, um, and then uh, we, I'll let you know what the next step is uh, for you to come to UMass. So hello. Uh, UMass Amherst, right now we are ranked number 26 among all the public universities in the U.S. And then um, my understanding is that we have more uh, individu individual uh, rankings that are uh, majors that has a uh, really high ranking. Uh, for example, that linguistics, this one that we rank number number two in the world. And this is just an example. And we also have with computer science, AI, psychology, business, uh, they all have their really good ranking. But the university as a whole, uh, we are ranked number 26 um, in the category of public universities 
in the United States. Uh, we also have another really nice ranking, which we're really proud of it, is our dining services, our dining hall. There are four dining halls on campus, and then we are ranked number one, six years in a row. And that means uh, our dining service is excellent and the food is really good. And then, but I want to have my students to tell you or uh, share their dining services and experience. So Yukika, can you tell us um, our dining? Are you happy with our dining? And then, um, and then Rashi, um, after, after Yukika is Rashi, go ahead. Yeah, um, I really love UMass Dining. We have like four different dining halls um, and they're spread out throughout campus. So you can go wherever is closest to you. Um, there's a lot of food options. So there's kosher, there's halal, there's gluten-free option. Um, so whatever you need, uh, UMass pretty much provides it. Um, there's also customizable options. So like stir fry or um, the sushi is also customizable. Um, and obviously there's like Indian, there's Chinese, there's Mexican food. So you really get to try food from all over all over the world. Mm -hmm. Rashi, what about you? Um, like as Yukika mentioned, like they have so many cuisines and so many variety of options for you always. So it's never like you're eating the same thing again and again. And I even find the food really, really delicious. And I was very worried because I didn't know that how college food is going to be, but mm -hmm. I was I'm very satisfied with the UMass dining. And I've had a great experience with it. Mm -hmm. Nice. JJ, I'm wondering if you can tell us how the uh, dining hall operates in terms of the hours. Hours? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, like, uh, you know, when it opens and into the, uh, when it closes. Oh, so the dining halls, they're usually open from early morning, providing the breakfast around seven o'clock, I believe. And um, they're, I believe two dining halls that are open till midnight, providing late night meals. So you, it's all you can always go there whenever you're hungry, whenever you want to grab a snack mm -hmm. uh, at like late night study. So it's very convenient. Mm -hmm. And then do you when you go in, do you pay or how do you do it? You use your U card, right? Yes. Um, you can um, purchase the swipes through our school system mm -hmm. so it, you can always use it at the dining hall and that ycmp and dining dollars which are usable at the school cafe and mm -hmm. the blue wall which is like a lot of different options besides the dining hall mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to uh, spend a little bit more time here uh, on the dining. It's not just the dining, because food is very, very important. And uh, and then particularly for international students that you are away from home and then you, you, you need a good food to eat. When you are, when you have a good food to eat, you're going to be so happy. And then when you are happy, then you're going to study really well. So that's why I want to spend a little more time here uh, talking about uh, dining services. Uh, UMass is a part of five colleges consortium. Uh, in this town, Amherst, there are five colleges. That one is UMass Amherst, and then there are four other uh, small liberal arts colleges. Uh, one is Amherst College, Mount Holyoke College, Hampshire College, and Smith College. And then five of us that we are five college consortium. So students can take courses at it. If you're a student at UMass Amherst and you say, I want to take a Spanish at Amherst College, then you can do that. Uh, there are students also come to UMass to take courses. So this is kind of, this is an idea for students to have more opportunities to maximize that your college experience. Uh, UMass Amherst that we are we respect our students from different backgrounds, different beliefs, and different gender. And then gender we take it seriously uh, for uh, to promote. Uh, gender equality. Uh, as an international student, I want to ask our students that uh, Zinap and Oku, what is your like? Oh, what is what is like for uh, as an international students on 
campus because you have uh, you're from Turkey and you have a different different background. Uh, can you share uh, your experience with us in terms of that you know from different background, uh, Zinap and Oku? Yeah, definitely for me coming to UMass, it was a huge difference in diversity because my country is not as diverse as the um, United States. So it was a big difference for me. Um, my major, I believe we don't have a lot of international students in animal science. So it was a huge difference, but I never felt that I was away. I never felt that I was different. It was, um, a very accepting community. I felt very accepting because we have many student organizations. Um, we have international student organizations. We have um, religious organizations you can choose. And it's just a great community that accepts you and does not, um, it's, it's like, I never felt that I was, um, away from others and I always sound like my people here so I believe that it was a very accepting community. Mm -hmm. Nice. What about Oku? Yeah as Zainab said like you don't feel this associated like you're always in the culture. I know it's like seeing different culture, cultures and living inside the environment is really beneficial to be honest to be mm -hmm. like better at your social life social skills and like it is, it is a whole different experience that you can have in your life. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, UMass AMS has had uh, uh, two billion investment to our campus. And what that means is that uh, people invested us in us. And then so our faculty members, they have the opportunities to do a lot of research. And then we also provide a lot of internship opportunities for our students. And then um, and back to the research, when faculty um, is doing research, they will invite their students to join them. And then therefore, all the opportunities are out there for our students to take uh, in terms of the uh, um, internship co-op and uh, uh, research. And um, I am wondering if JJ and Rashi, can you help? Uh, can you share your experience in uh, what you do in terms of uh, research and uh, internship? JJ and Rashi, go ahead. So the research, I've been always looking for the research opportunity since I have like very like specific topic that I really want to investigate, I would say. Um, and the best way I thought was doing the research but I I couldn't really find like you can always join the research through like talking directly to the professor but I found a great opportunity which is a which was a lease from last summer that's been that's been run by uh, our um, our school mm -hmm. and I started research through that and I I continued until now um, it's really amazing like you, they train you step by step and it's like a great opportunity to study the sub subject in depth mm -hmm. and perform the experiment based on your uh, understanding and what you really want to observe so it's it's amazing for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. that's nice um uh, what about uh rashi um, so I'm doing an internship this semester and I'm doing it through a program that we have in the psychology department. Mm -hmm. Basically, you stay um, at the Mount Ida campus of UMass. So UMass has uh, another campus um, uh, in Newton, which is really, really close to Boston. And students can stay over here while they are doing an internship uh, in like Boston or any near town. And it's like a really good opportunity because during the academic year, you can like have internship experiences without worrying about where you will stay or, you know, where you can find accommodation. Mm -hmm. Because especially like as an international student, I was really worried about that. If I have to do an internship, where will I stay and how it would be very costly to like find an apartment and pay rent. So this is like a really good option where you also get to stay on a campus and gain like experience in your field. Mm -hmm. so, 
I think like you must have so many opportunities like this where uh, you can do internships and they have like a career center where you can talk to them about it and seek advice if you want to do an internship. Mm -hmm. How do you, uh, how did you specifically uh, find this internship? Um, so I was, um, if you, uh, every major has their newsletters that they send you every month or to your e email address. And it's, um, if you read these newsletters, you'll find a lot of opportunities and things that are just happening around the campus. Mm -hmm. And um, through that, I was able to find about this program that is happening this semester. And I was able to sign up for it. Mm, okay, wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Um, and then UMass AMS has a very strong global alumni network. And I always tell international students that come in here uh, to earn your degree uh, is very important. But um, from my perspective, that more importantly is that you, 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 you created your, your networking uh, with other students uh, because that, that will give you, uh, that opens a lot of opportunities around the world. Imagine that you are, when you're here, you make friends with Brazilian students, with the students from Nigeria, with the students from Australia, with the students from, from Europe, so and then you and then that will give you all the connect all the network and then uh, can help you in the future you know in terms of finding a career and everything. So we we also have a stronger this global online network and then um, that can help our, uh, our students to uh, for their career in the future. Okay. Um, we are located in a small town and the town is quite small. And then it's very vibrant. Uh, it's called Amherst. And that is about an hour and a half from um, Boston and three hours from New York City. Um, you, Kika, can you share your experience? Um, you know, like uh, I will just talk about our location and then uh, accessibilities to big cities. And then also I, um, uh, JJ, can you also share? Uh, that how you get around the town, how you get to uh, big cities if when you want to go. JJ, uh, uh, Yukika and JJ. Yeah, so Amherst is very much a college town. So if you go downtown, you can definitely find a lot of college students there as well. Um, it's even from the five colleges. So there's a, a, there's a lot of nature in Amherst. So a lot of people go hiking, they go biking. In the winter, they might go ice skating or sledding. Um, so there's a, like a variety of sports and activities to do in that sense. And then there's also like movie theaters, escape rooms in Amherst. Um, if you need to buy snacks or go grocery shopping, there's also like a variety of stores like Trader Joe's and Stop and Shop, uh, not Stop and Shop, Trader Joe's and Whole Foods. Um, so you can definitely get around. And then we use a bus system called PVTA. And basically it'll take you um, downtown. It can take you to Sunderland, Northampton, all the surrounding um, areas. And then if you ever want to go to the bigger cities, you can also um, make a, a reserve a ticket for the Peter Pan bus. And that bus will actually take you to places like New York. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What about JJ? So like Yukika said, the bus transportation has been really helpful for me as I live off campus and I need to go to store several times a week. And it's amazing as I can just take the bus for free and then go get groceries and like some other um, stuff that I need easily. And also like the, um, I, it's really easy to go to campus through the bus. It's free and I have multiple bus that goes to campus. So I don't have to worry about being late for classes every day. It's, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, we are. Uh, our it's a it, it's a college town, Amherst, and then um I I feel like as students can uh when you are in Amherst, it's a very friendly place, and then it's really nice, quiet, and peaceful, and then it's a great environment for you to study and then uh, for your daily life. But sometimes during the break or long weekend, now you want to experience the big city, that kind of experience. And then it's really easy. You can just hop on the bus, Peter Pan, or students take Amtrak, or students, they uh, call even Uber, and then to go to Boston, to go to 
New York City, uh, Washington DC, uh, Baltimore, and and it's with the great except, um, accessibility to big cities. And then you, you have fun there in a big city and then you come back on campus, you come back to Amherst, is it once again, it's a nice place for you to study. Um, you, uh, UMass Amherst is a very uh, uh, diverse campus that we uh, have a, a, about uh, 23,000 undergraduate students and 8% uh, uh, is international po student population. And then um, our students, 100% of the first year students, so freshman students, uh, they are required uh, to be uh, to live on campus, uh, we have enough um, rooms for you uh, for the first year students, and then the second year you have the option to uh, continue to live on campus, or you can move out. Uh, what we call the off campus housing. Um, Zenab and uh, and Yukika, can you share uh, with us that uh, how you when you were looking for your housing? submitting your application, housing application, how did you find your roommate and what kind of room type that you had? Uh, Yukika and uh, Zinap? Yeah, so my school year might've been, my freshman year might've been a bit different from what you guys have now because during that time it was COVID heavy, but um, at the time I met my roommate through Facebook actually. So um, I know a lot of new students will find out that they actually have um, this like UMass Facebook chat. Um, for you guys, it might be UMass class of 2027. Uh, for me, it was UMass class of 2024. And basically I introduced myself there and then I chatted um, with a couple of different people and I met my roommate through there and we chatted more on Instagram and then we decided we would room together. So because of COVID, we didn't actually room together, mm -hmm. but um, it was going to happen. And I am still rooming with her now. Um, my first freshman dorm was in the honors residential community. So I lived in Sycamore Hall. Um, it was really great. There was AC during the summer, which I really appreciated. Um, usually with freshmen, a lot of people open their doors um, the first week so people can get to know each other. Um, so I really wouldn't worry about getting to know people. Um, it's very comfortable, very um, easygoing. Mm -hmm. Nice. Zinap, what about you? Yeah, I had the chance of joining a residential academic program in my first year. Um, in that, we basically live in the same floor and every person that lives on the same floor is the same major as you. So I had the chance of getting the contact information of the people that were going to be on the same floor as me. Mm -hmm. We made a document where we shared our interests, shared our requests for our living styles, and just basically explained how we want our rooms to be. Mm -hmm. And then we chose our roommates. So I had the great chance of living with a person that I want to live with. Um, I first, my first year, I lived in Crabtree Hall. It was in Northeast, and it was a great location. And now um, in my second year, I'm living in Sylvan area and um, it's cash and hole. So it's sweet living. So you have the chance of living in a suite with um, five other people. It's a great um, opportunity if you have um, a lot of close friends so you don't have to live with a stranger. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm glad that you mentioned about RAP program. It's residential academic program. Can you uh, please talk about that a little bit more? um that how the living mm -hmm. student learning I, I know that is the learning and living uh living community can you talk about that a little bit more please yeah yeah so um before applying for housing I searched for residential academic programs we have many according to your major we have um also different living areas depending on um um your um ethnicity we have Mm -hmm. um, I think we have the Hispanic residential, um, we have Black African student um, residential hall, we have Asian, we have, um, um, I, I'm not really informed on those, but I know that we have many more options. Mm -hmm. um, but as of for residential academic programs, they are more major based. Mm -hmm. I know we have for animal science, that's what I chose, and we have for 
many other uh, majors. We have for many other interests so that you can be in a residential area that's um, within people that are sharing interests as mm -hmm. you. Um, so I would definitely say that it's been a game changer in my living situation because I got to know the people of my major. I mm -hmm. got to know uh, my RA, my residential assistant was also an animal science major. So she was more of like a mentor to me. Mm -hmm. So it was really helpful in learning more about my major. Mm -hmm. Making friends, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a, it, it's a, what we call the wrap program that, you know, the, the people who live in on the same floor in the same building, they are the same major. Then not only that you live together, but also you go to classes together. You know, it's the, it, it can bond with other students. Not a, that, like you say, it's a game changer. Wonderful. Um, you must admit that we have more than 100 majors and then in 10 different schools and colleges. Um, many of our students, they will do double major. Sometimes they change major. For example, that you are admitted to right now your economy major, for, for instance, and then, uh, and then or history major. And then you think that, you know, down the, down the road, I want to change to uh, some other major. Uh, that is possible. And then uh, some majors, they are closed and some majors, they are open and some majors, they are, uh, they have the application process. It all depends. And then your academic advisor will be the person. Uh, every, student will, every student will be assigned to uh, one academic advisor. And then uh, that person's job will, is to help you to navigate that your uh, academic plans on, on campus. And then if you want to change your major, you want to have a double major, uh, you can do that. And then your academic advisor will be the person who can assist you. And I know Mark, um, Yukika, you're doing uh, marketing and informatics. And I also see uh, JJ, you have physics and applied math. So do you want to talk about uh, please talk about your uh, double major experience, how you become double majoring. Um, and so Yukika and JJ, please. Yeah, so I entered UMass as a marketing major. Um, I was really interested in the most creative side of business. Um, and I realized that I actually really did enjoy marketing. So I wanted to continue with it. Um, but I also wanted to gain some more skills in the analytical area. So I decided to try taking um, a CS course and, and an informatics course, I think. Um, and I realized that I really enjoyed the informatics course. And so something, so I decided to try to apply into that major. So with the informatics with the informatics course and actually the CS major, I mean, the informatics major and the CS major, you have to apply into the major. So for me, I'm pretty sure I had to get like above a C for two courses. And then once you do fulfill that criteria, you submit your application. And so while I was going through that process, I was talking to the CICS like peer advisors. Um, they're basically students who can kind of guide you through the process. And then I also talked to my own academic advisor about how I could kind of fit all my classes into my schedule. Um, and so basically a lot of people supported me along the way. And then I ended up getting accepted for the major. And so currently I do double major and um, it's really great. It's kind of like exploring different worlds. Um, I really love enjoying, I really love learning about different topics. So um, I really recommend double majoring if you're interested in a variety of different um, topics. Thank you. JJ, what about you? So I started with physics major at first and realized I specifically have more interest in math part of physics. So I decided to uh, double major math. Mm -hmm. And luckily, uh, a lot of uh, re requirements for the freshman year in physics um, intersect with pre-request for math double majoring mm -hmm. uh, requirement. So I was able to apply the math double majoring and I got accepted very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it's really awesome that I can learn topics that's been briefly covered in physics and learn in depth in math classes. And it was really nice to um, apply as academic advisors always av was avail always available mm -hmm. for me to uh, make sure that I take the right classes and make sure I'm fulfilling all the requirements. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. So JJ just mentioned, emphasized the academic advisor. Uh, this person's role is very important to students. That and and again, this person is the help you to navigate to plan. Uh, you know, majors that you want to do, and then choose choose classes. And then, as JJ mentioned, that physics and applied math. Um, have uh, some overlap of courses. Uh, therefore, it was really relatively easy for her to just to take um, other courses and declare applied uh, math as her other major. And then you can see Ukika is, uh, is doing uh, marketing and then informatics. If you notice, the marketing uh, is under Eisenberg School of Management. Uh, and then whereas informatics is on the College of Computer Science. So at UMass Amherst that you can take, you, when you do double major, it doesn't have to be within the same college. You can have across colleges uh, the major that you can declare as a uh, double major. And then once again, academic advisor is the key person who can help you to uh, achieve the goals. Uh, we have many ways for you to get connected with us. Uh, you can connect with your school and, and majors to learn more about uh, the curriculum and the credits and the courses, or even our professors. Um, we also have more than uh, 400 student organizations, clubs uh, for you to participate and to make a friend with. And so I want to ask students the uh, uh, Zinap and uh, and Yukika, your student organization experience. Zinap, please. Yeah, I had a chance of joining, I think, two student organizations beginning for my freshman year. Um, I, when I was back in Turkey, I really loved um, horseback riding because um, I have I had been doing it since I was a kid. So when I came here, I really didn't want to get separated from the sports. I have been doing. So I searched for the equestrian club that UMass has and I just joined them. And it was really, it was a really good experience. Um, I, I had been missing doing the sport. So it was great that I was able to meet more people who liked the stuff I liked and um, just the opportunity to ride horses again in a different country, it was amazing. And then I had the chance of joining the pre-veterinary club, which is a club for students that are interested in attending veterinary school after they graduate. Um, we have weekly meetings and we have, um, sometimes we have um, speakers who are veterinarians or who are in admissions of veterinary colleges, just giving information sessions. And it's a great place to, um, get your networking done and just be informed on stuff that you want to continue after college. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yukika? Yeah, so I joined a couple of organizations. So uh, for example, the more business side, I joined UMass Ad Lab and basically you work with a group of students to um, help a client with a certain problem. And so you might be coming up with graphics, you might coming up with different strategies to help improve um, their business. Um, so that's something that you could do. I know there's like Eisenberg consulting groups. There's a variety of different organizations that you can join. You'll probably learn more about them like during the club fairs. Um, I also joined the Taiwanese and Chinese Student Association. So I'm actually part of eBoard for that organization. Um, I do a lot of PR work for them. So that means I'm making a lot of the Instagram post designs. Um, I'm communicating with other organizations. Um, and I think it's a, just a really great way to get to know a group of people really well, as well as interact with people who are from your culture. Um, a lot of students who aren't even Chinese will come to our events and they'll experience making lanterns or they'll just be there to watch their friends perform. And so it's just a great way to get to know people and learn more about other people's culture. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. It's all about like balance your campus life. Uh, you want to study hard and not take your academic seriously. But at the same time, you want to make friends and build your network and uh, join, join our student clubs, student organizations is the best way to do so. And I do encourage students to do, to do that, uh, especially you know, your international students away from home, 
you don't know many people here, and that is definitely a really nice way to uh, build your friendships with others. Uh, we also have many um, uh, online events or campus visit, and I know many of you are probably not able to come to our campus. Uh, so therefore, we have many online uh, sessions for you to participate and to get to uh, know more about UMass Amherst. Um, so there's some resources that you can. I uh, want to talk about the uh, tuition and fee. So <clears throat> this is tuition and fee that is uh, the for international the uh, tuition is about thirty eight thousand dollars, and you have we have also a couple of fees here, um, and then a uh, health plan uh, that is two thousand four hundred and eighty. Uh, that is mandatory because uh, the medical uh, services is really. They're, they're very expensive here in the U.S. And as an international student, it is mandatory that you have to, you must purchase a uh, health plan, health plan, and then so that can cover your medical bill. Um, so, and then we have a housing and food, the, the meal plan that is as, uh, estimated. Uh, this will be uh, a little bit slightly different, uh, different depends on the housing, uh, the room type that you choose. And I believe the single occupant uh, occupancy will be more expensive uh, than like a three people or, or double occupancy. Uh, so this is, again, it's just the uh, estimated. And then you also have a meal plan. Uh, this is based on unlimited uh, and it's about $7,000 a year. But when you come here, you, you realize that you don't need so many, you, you don't need unlimited. You can uh, switch to 200 times or 500 times, and that can reduce the, the cost uh, of the, the, the food, food food cost. And then if you have a scholarship, that's for example, uh, our tuition is $38,000. And then if you have a scholarship that is, uh, I mean, Chancellor Award, if $10,000, then you're gonna deduct $10,000, then your tuition will become $28,000 for the um, for four years, for four years. So the, the, the price here is for the I-20 purpose, is for I-20 purpose. And then also we have uh, what we call the variable cost. This is not the money, it's not the bill that you're gonna pay to the university. This is what we think that you might need, you might prepare, you might show uh, you have this amount of money in your bank account. Bank account. Uh, for example, we think for the vacation and winter breaks that and, and spring breaks, you might need about $2,000. And then you also need to buy books, supply, doing laundry, et cetera. And that's about like a one, 1,400. So, so we believe we, we think that you need to show us that you have uh you know not really showed us that this is the government USCIS the regulation that you're gonna show us that you have about sixty one thousand dollars in your bank account um in order for us to uh issue I twenty for or issue I twenty and again if you have a scholarship you can deduct from from this amount. Um, and then once you get the I-20, you are going to uh, make an appointment with your uh, uh, the U.S. Embassy in your country, in your city, and then uh, you will have interviewed appointment and then to get your student visa. If you already have I-20, for example, you are attending a high school in the U.S. right now, and then you already have I-20, you don't need another I-20. You can transfer your I-20. And IPO, International Programs Office at UMass, what we call the IPO, it's the, the office that can assist you to transfer your I-20 from your current high school to UMass Amherst. I'm gonna say that again. If you are already a high school student, um, you have your I-20 and you're attending a high school in the U.S. You don't need 
another I-20. You can use your current I-20 and transfer to UMass Amherst and the IPO International Program Office. They are the, the office that can help you, assist you to transfer your I-20 from your current high school to UMass Amherst. And then uh, there are some ti timelines here, uh, starting uh, June 1st, do, oh, I'm sorry, do June 1st, that once you commit to coming to UMass Amherst, you're gonna do some online, um, online work that is you're gonna complete orientation, such as a guide to the U and register and select a day for the ready for the U. This is gonna be, uh, all the information will be available once you, com you, you commit to come to uh, UMass Amherst. And then also you're gonna submit your housing preferences. It's a housing application. The application will open uh, in June, will open in June, okay? And again, you're gonna receive the information and email from our housing department. And you're gonna, re you're gonna submit your final transcript. Uh, UMass Amherst, we require that you must finish your high school and then um, to the extent that you have to, uh, your guidance counselor will have to submit your final transcript. And then now we know that you complete, you completed your high school coursework. And if you're doing A-levels, you're doing IB, uh, we expect that you're gonna submit your A-level um, the result and also the IBDP uh, whenever that is available. This is just some time, timelines that, I, like I say, uh, if April 1st, you have the access to uh, Guide to the U opens, and then June 1st, you're gonna, you're gonna complete all this, and also, and then and at the same time, you're going to start your uh, housing application. So we're gonna um, open, if the time for you to ask questions. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to just type in the chat. Let's see what questions that students have. Hey guys, so if you see any question, you can just uh, answer. Uh, uh, double measuring does not affect the price of tuition. So you can triple measure and it'll be the same price. Mm -hmm, that's true. And then, and then you can also uh, pretty much graduate at the same time. Right. Yeah, you don't need to uh, have more time uh, to graduate because, and that is the why I, I keep saying that academic advisor is really important because that person knows how to manage your, help you to manage your courses so you don't have to spend more time to graduate. Okay. Is there a rolling team club at UMass? I believe so. Yeah. Oh, I did want to note that like campus pulse mainly lists like all the registered student organizations but at UMass there's also a lot of clubs that are not registered and they also hold um have a lot of activities um that you can attend usually you have to find them through social media but they do exist mm -hmm. um and then Maggie I also got a question about what time the first year fee has to be paid do you think you can cover that um yeah the the tuition I believe that the the first class office required that you pay before the class starts, and then um, however there's a add and drop. Um, Quick, are you still here? Quick is now, and I believe that it it requires that you have to pay before the school uh the the class starts, but however we have the add and drop. Uh, period, right? So, you, for example, that like you you say I registered four courses, and then and then and then, but within the uh, ten days or two weeks uh, after the, the school starts, you have the opportunity to add more courses or to drop the courses that you don't want, and then sometimes the bill will change; it will be adjusted. And then uh, sometimes it return your money or you have to pay more. But basically, uh, 
it will be, you will have to, you will get a bill. You must register the class. And then that will happen during, during the, um, the summer. So uh, typically international students, uh, they will have two, two um, orientations. One is online that will happen in the summer. That will happen in the summer. So it's online and then you're gonna meet with your academic advisor. And then your academic advisor will help you to register class, register classes like what you need to take in the fall. And then uh and just a couple of days before uh before the school starts, and you're gonna be on campus, and then there will be another uh, orientation that is an in-person orientation. So uh once you register the class and then you choose your room and you choose your uh uh, 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 meal plan, and then we will know the bill. So typically it's the, the sometimes before the class uh, starts, that is the when the bill do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you are not, there's another question. If you are not in the honors program right now, you will be able to apply uh, to be in the honors program. And then uh, that will be the, the second semester of your freshman year, second semester of your, of your freshman year. And you think I wanna apply to uh, honors college and then, and then you can do that. And then I believe is as long as if you have three, the requirement is 3.4 or 3.8 GPA. Uh, I think it's 3.4 from your first semester of uh, freshman year. And once you get admitted uh, to Honors College, you can start your Honors College uh, in the beginning of the second year. Okay. When does the fall semester start? Um, this year it's going to be September 6th. Uh, it's, it is after uh, Labor Day weekend. So it's a September 6th. And you will be arriving, you, you, you will be asked to arrive uh, around, well, probably four days before and then for the orientation. If you are not in the U.S. right now, uh, and then you, if you are outside the, the U.S. and then you apply, you gonna you you come you enter the U.S. with your F one visa, and then the earliest date for you to enter uh, the U.S. will be forty five days prior to the first day of school starts. So, for example, now right now you are in the U.K. and then you have F one visa. And then you say you apply, you, you get your uh, I, you get your F1 visa in May. And you say, you know what? I'm going to go to the U.S. in June and just spend my summer there. Uh, you can't do that because with F1 visa and to enter the country, you have to be uh, 45 days prior to the, uh, the school, the first day of class. Okay. But you will be asked to come. Um, Later, so we take a couple of days before school starts. And uh, oh, four plus program. Oh, this is a very good question. That we offer this four. Oh, Yukika, thank you. Oh, no, you are doing the link. So, four plus one uh, master program is that. You are you can do uh, undergraduate for four four years, and you just need to take an additional year, um, and then to to complete your uh, um, master degree. So in five years, you get undergraduate degree and a master degree, and then you and and. I any you can do any under any major as your undergraduate uh, degree and then and the additional year there are uh, a couple 
a couple of the, the programs that will give you, you can do that for uh, your master program, master degree. Um, so there, there, are, there are more information. Uh, the information is available on our website, or you can email me and then I can tell you more about this four plus one um, master program, okay? Okay, the first day of class is in May, is September 5th. Uh, freshman students, are they allowed to have a car? Do you guys have a car? Um, I don't, but I'm pretty sure that they can. Yeah, they can. And then they have to uh, have the permit to park, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, where and by when students will have to come from the enrollment. Um, before May 1st, before May 1st, you are going to log on your student portal and there will be a place where you can uh, submit $500, $500 as your enrollment deposit. And then uh, this $500 is, is a part of your tuition. So uh, by the time that you pay uh, your tuition, it's going to be $500 less. Uh, that is from your uh, the deposit. So by May 1st, log on your student portal and then you will be able to pay uh, that $500. And it has to be again by May 1st. Let's talk about this uh, airport. Um, Rashi, where do you fly? Where did you fly to when you came to the U.S. and uh, and Tokyo? Can you share your ex experience? Um, so I mostly choose to um, fly to either EWR, which is New York, um, or J. Which is New York City, and I just prefer these two because they have more direct flights. So to India, so I prefer them. But you can always also take like flights from Boston, and um, they might have a layover, but um, they also have a lot of options. Really depends on, uh, from where you're traveling, mm -hmm. and I think um, if you do come at Boston. Uh, they have Peter Pan uh, bus services that uh, can directly pick you up from the Boston Logan Airport and drop you at the UMass campus. Mm -hmm. so it's very convenient um, to arrive at Boston that way. Okay. What about uh, Okyo? Well, I usually land to Boston because there, like, there's a direct flight from Istanbul that you can take, Boston Logan. Uh, airport and also from the Boston Logan Airport there is a Peter Pan bus that you can take to come to UMass campus directly mm -hmm. which is like between 30 to 40 dollars mm -hmm. per ticket yep all right thank you personally every time when I fly out I live in Amherst when I fly out of the country I always go to uh, the uh, BDL is Bradley International Airport. That is about 45 minutes uh, from, from Amherst. And it's a small airport and it's so easy to handle. Uh, even uh, when I take an international flight, I can just be there like a, an hour before the flight. And it's relatively uh, easier than um, Boston or JFK or Newark. Uh, so it really depends on where you're flying from. And then, and then how you can tolerate the travel time and then handle this, you know, some big airport. Um, but it def it, it, it's definitely available if you want to just fly out of BDL. And then again, that's about 45 minutes by car uh, from Amherst. How bike friendly is UMass? Do you guys take bike? I know a lot of students, they uh, they do like an electronic scooter, but I, I think most of the students, they just take a bus, right? 
Yukika, can you tell us about like uh, buses uh, on campus, around campus too? Yeah, so um, I usually take the PBTA to go downtown, um, especially if I want to go grocery shopping. I know some students might take the bus to go to a different dorm. UMass is really big. The campus is really big. So especially when it's cold, some people might not want to walk. So for example, I might take a bus from Southwest to um, Orchard Hill um, because walking that amount might take me 20 minutes or so. So um, some people might take the bus. We also have like um, the PVTA app. So the PVTA app you can download and it will tell you, for example, how long it'll take you to walk to a certain location, um, whether a bus is late or not, whether there's some kind of um, issue with the bus. Um, so it's really helpful. And I think you guys should definitely use it once you guys are on campus. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily you have to buy a bike because, because, uh, because the, the bus is just very, very convenient. Uh, this is a question, the last question that we're going to answer. It's really, uh, it's a really good question. So, you know, you know, being an international student and how you, how you adjust that, like, uh, changing your schooling system and even language, and then how considerate are the teachers or professors about the language barriers. Um, I am going to ask Rashi and uh, Zinab to answer this question. Um, yeah, I just wrote something on the chat, but I can elaborate on that, that um, I think I was definitely worried about the fact that English is not my first language, and mm -hmm. it can be challenging, especially um, when it comes to your academics, and when you have to write certain essays, or you need to give certain exams, it can be a little difficult, because you, um, it's not part of your daily vocabulary, but I think in my first year, um, I, if I had any issues with any readings that I was given or if any essay I need to write, I reached out to my professors, um, explaining them that, you know, English is not my first language and I might not understand what is uh, given in the text. And I think they were really considerate about it and they definitely helped me out a lot to um, go through the readings and everything. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're definitely helpful and understanding about the fact that um, it may not be your strongest suit. Um, you can even meet with your, um, everyone has a, a success, success coach um, from CMAS uh, and you can always uh, meet with them also to discuss any cultural ba uh, barriers that you might be having and they can definitely help you out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What about Zina? Yeah, I think for me, the auditory process was very difficult because, of course, English is not my first language. So just hearing a, a professor talk very fast in an 8 a.m. class, I just had like problems with comprehending what they were trying to say. So definitely, like Rashi mentioned, communication is key. Please, if you're not understanding something, talk to your professor. Sorry about the background noise. Um, talk to your professor, talk to your peers definitely get advantage of classes that are recorded because they usually tend to have subtitles and just don't forget to communicate with your professor. I would say that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And I want to thank you everyone here tonight uh, uh, to participate in you, this webinar. And then the time is up. And then this session uh, has been recorded and we will send out a recording to everyone. And then uh, meanwhile, if you have any questions, um, you are more than welcome to email us. There are a couple of email addresses here. If you want to reach to my office, International Missions, uh, you can email international admissions.umas.edu. And um, we hope to see you on campus this fall. Uh, if you have any question, once again, you're more than welcome to email us and we will answer the questions that you might have. So thank you and uh, take care. Good night. Bye-bye.